one quarterback gang. Don't say we don't do anything Come on, for you. Okay? <laughs> we are here with a fresh one quarterback rookie mock draft to help out the community. Do us a favor. Hit that like button. That's to be right. honest with y'all, we know there's a big community out there for one quarterback gang. While we prefer super flex, we do this because there's a lot of interest. So shout Absolutely. out to everybody out there in the one quarterback gang. Show some love. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you like the content. Uh, but we are going to go back and forth. And we are using the landing spots from the great, the famous Shane Hollum of Draft Talk Countdown. To Shane. This is his latest seven-round mock draft, which was released on the 8th of April. Uh, so let's get straight to it. I'm going to give you the 101, Badaki, the okay. honor of the 101. So, what are you thinking here? Uh, look, I had to think real hard about this one. At the 101, mm -hmm. I'm I'm currently at the Chicago Bears. I am straining Tough call. on which quarterback to take here. You got Keon Coleman available on the board. Some would say the best wide receiver in this NFL draft. Not for me, mm. but for some. Johnny Wilson. <laughs> I mean, 6'7", he should definitely play tight end. We need a tight end. All right, there's no need to play around. Obviously, one quarterback. Let's go Marin Havison Jr. going to the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray. I've been saying my nice little sleeper over there, Michael Wilson. He's going to come in, be the number one wide receiver here with Marvin Harrison Jr. and Caleb Williams. Uh, or excuse me. And um, Kyler Murray over there. So I'll take him here at the 101. Yes, Marvin Harrison Jr., the unquestioned number one in Arizona to start mm -hmm. his career. That's, that's, that's fun. But uh, can I interest you, the number one wide receiver for Justin Herbert? Oh, I mean. How about Malik Neighbors going at the... <laughs> Fifth overall pick to the Chargers. I've been oh saying it since December. I got Malik and Marvin in the oh same category. Ooh. It's my personal opinion that if Marvin Harrison Jr.'s name was actually Marvin Johnson Jr., I think people would be more, more open to the Malik-Marvin Marvin debate. Johnson. But it just feels like if you don't have Marvin as the unquestioned guy in his own tier, then you're doing something wrong. I disagree. I think there are plenty of things that Malik does much better than Marvin Harrison Jr. He is a better athlete. He is better after the catch. Uh, he's a more explosive player with the ball in his hands. Now, clearly there are some things that Marvin does better, but let's play out this world. If you're telling me, someone like myself, who already has Malik and Marvin in the same tier, you're telling me one goes to play with Justin Herbert, different offense. One goes to play with Kyla Murray in Arizona. I mean, is there a real conversation for Malik Neighbors as a one-on-one -on -one and one quarterback formats? I'm, I'm throwing the question out there. Hey, is there? I think it just all depends. It all depends on how you feel, who you believe in the quarterback. I think that's going to be the biggest argument. If this actually happens in the real NFL draft, people are going to want, I think, Malik Neighbors in potentially a John Harbaugh offense with Justin Herbert, who has produced multiple fantasy relevant wide receivers. Not saying Kyle Murray can't do it and oh, hasn't yeah, done it. Just saying that I think they probably like that offense better. It's more of a high-powered offense. We've seen it a tough division as well. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we can go. Look, we can no one likes it. clickbait less than me, all right? Mm -hmm. But this is not clickbait, them being in the same tier. Just a friendly reminder, okay? Friendly. Best PFF receiving grade of any wide receiver last year was Malik Neighbors, 92.7 grade. He's a versatile player, plays inside, plays outside, about 50% in the slot, about 50% out wide. He's a route running technician. He's got great ball skills. The speed is there. The yak threat is there. Uh, I'm seeing shades of Antonio Brown, Reggie Wayne, DJ Moore. So put some respect on DJ's, uh, on Malik's name. <laughs> but I, I can make a case for either of those guys at the 101. No what question. are you thinking at the 103? No question. At the 103, let me say, the best wide receiver in the class just because of this landing spot. Okay, oh, wow. just because of one of the greatest organizations in the NFL, and that is Romo Duze going to my beloved New York football giants. That instantly, that should be a new conversation for the one-on-one mm. <laughs> at the wide receiver position. <laughs> All jokes, obviously, Daniel Jones seems like... Drew Locke throwing him the ball. Yeah, Daniel Jones, Drew Locke. Who's going to be throwing him the ball? I don't, I don't know, and I don't care. All I know is he's going <laughs> to be in, instantly be the number one wide receiver there, That's getting 100-plus targets in this offense. They've been desperately in need of a big body wide receiver and this is exactly what they get i mean he is roman dudes i said twitch your t higgins very strong mm. hands more of fluidity if you were to compare him to t higgins he comes in yeah. instantly becomes a game changer for my beloved new york football giants and they might get a quarterback in the second round here just yep. have to wait and see if i do take him or maybe you take him
Yeah, by the way, I've heard someone come out with the comp of Devontae Adams, and it makes a lot of sense. My comp for Rome has always been if you combine a Chris Olave and a Cortland Sutton at his prime, mm-hmm. I think you get a Roma Dunze. Nice. Real NFL draft analyst that we like, I can't remember who it was. I don't think it was Jeremiah. I can't remember, but I was gonna someone say that I, I trust was saying he is Devontae Adams. And I was like, oh, my God, that is that is kind of crazy to think about because I can kind of see it a little bit. Yeah, some people but have at, Rome. I'm, ahead of sorry some people have Roma some ahead people of do yeah yeah some people do and at the end of the day Roma Dunze is probably the number one wide receiver in like seven out of the last no question. 10 draft classes no question it's just a very different draft class this year um all right I'm at the 104 and look in a tight end premium format I would probably lean a certain way but this is non tight end premium for today all right and in a non tight end premium league I would have Brian Thomas ranked one spot ahead of Brock Bowers, and that's where I'm going. I'm going Brian Thomas Jr. He links up with Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville. It didn't work out for Calvin Ridley, but clearly this team has a hole outside. Yes, Gabe Davis is always going to be a Z or a Y. I mean, he's never going to be your true alpha X that you are running your offense through. He has never had a season over 100 targets. He's never had a season over 1,000 receiving yards. And he's never had a season over a 60% catch rate, okay? Mm -hmm. So that is your deep ball, big play type of guy. And Brian Thomas Jr. is an extremely upgraded version of that, but there is no ceiling to his game. So you get Brian Thomas Jr., you play him on the outside, you keep Kirk in the slot, and obviously, Gabe Davis can keep the role that he had uh, as kind of this splash player. But Brian Thomas Jr., the Jags have never given Trevor Lawrence a first-round wide receiver to grow around. Uh, well, Joe Burrow got one. Sure. Right? Kyler Murray is going to, at one point, he got DeAndre Hopkins, yep. right? This is the Jags' first time saying, we're going to invest serious capital. I guess Calvin Ridley, you can make a case, but they didn't keep him. But Brian Thomas Jr. here at the 104, I'll take him. Yeah, look, it definitely makes sense here at the 104. I'm going BTJ. Now, you did mention tight end premium. I actually want to start a conversation because I actually truly do believe now with the move of Stephon Diggs, I actually believe people would do this. So let's have the conversation. I'll take this person, Adnai Mitchell, going to the Buffalo Bills in the first overall or not the first overall pick for the Buffalo Bills, 20th overall pick. Yeah. Now, the conversation, which we'll definitely have once that player gets off the board, I do believe he can potentially go ahead of Brock Bowers based on landing spot. And with Stephon Diggs no longer on this team, leaving behind 120-plus targets that we've seen, what, the past three, four years that he's been with Josh Allen, we've seen this offense want to open up and then say, you know what, we're not just going to lean on Stephon Diggs. We're going to lean on multiple people. And I mentioned now becoming the number one wide receiver on this offense here with Josh Allen and Joe Brady, they want to switch things up. And Adonai Mitchell being the number one guy who we both have said, is very underrated. I think a lot of the fantasy yes. community has been rising him up in in the fantasy rankings. How he ran in the four, the four, the low four threes, if I'm not mistaken, in phenomenal wide receiver. I think this is a true possibility based yeah. on landing spot that Andy Mitch can go ahead of Brock Bowers once you know the landing spot to where Brock Bowers goes. So comment down below. I genuinely want to know: Would you do this? I know yeah. we will always say, you know talent over situation, but I think this could potentially happen here with Adonai Mitchell going to the Buffalo Bills. It makes a lot of sense. We recorded a video um, a couple days ago last week, and we talked about Dalton Kincaid and who benefits the most from Stefan Diggs leaving. And my position was whoever they draft in the first round benefits the most. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Kincaid, I thought, as well benefited. Yeah, both of them. There's no reason in my mind, based off watching Adonai's film, I know the spreadsheets people are going to hate it but there's no reason based off film why he couldn't lead this team day one you yeah. know as a, as a first round wide receiver uh and i've seen some people comp him to cd lamb i can't see that personally but my ceiling my tippy top for him was deandre hopkins so i think there's a scenario here where um people just underrate him as a route runner that's what i'll say i think yeah. i think he can be very successful from day one i agree so it makes sense um and I'll go ahead and take Brock Bowers off the board. The the fall stops here at the 106. And get ready for the comments, Badaki. <laughs> There's no league in any world where Brock Bowers falls to the 106 and one quarterback. Just get ready for that Come comment because it's coming. <laughs> but um, there is nothing wrong with Brock Bowers. We are not anti-Brock Bowers. 
but this is not a Titan Premium format. Um, however, I did a little bit of research for a video yesterday. Um, that video is going to come out at some point. I, I can't tell you exactly when. Mm -hmm. But basically what I did is I researched the hit rate of every position in every round. And first round tight ends are the second, um, I guess, low risk bet you can make in a rookie draft. Okay. Right. 77.8% uh, of tight ends taken in round one in the last decade have given you a top 12 season on a points per game basis. So um, I'll go ahead and take uh, Brock Bowers, generational talent. I'll take him at the 106. Obviously, questions long term about his quarterback play. And non titan premium is what puts him down the board a little bit. Yeah, and I think that is the biggest conversation here. I know we love Garrett Wilson and why he's projected to be this top guy. Honestly, we still haven't seen it. And now he has to compete with one of the best tight ends coming into the NFL draft. And yeah. is he going to surpass Garrett Wilson? Absolutely not. But Aaron Rodgers has supported you know, some tight ends in the past as well. So that I think this is why I'm just questioning it. Aaron Rodgers, let's sure. just say he plays for another two years, but you would rather have Adonai Mitchell, who's going to be with Josh Allen for the next four years, right? Makes sense. It, just different and conversations. Titan premium, maybe, maybe Brock is the 104, yeah. probably. Different conversations willing to have here. All right, at the 107, one of the fastest wide receivers going to a Super Bowl contending team, clearly, maybe going for the repeat. The Kansas City Chiefs takes Xavier dynasty. Worthy to Dynasty. With the 32nd overall pick in the NFL draft. Now, I do agree with you, Zach, that them acquiring Hollywood Brown now takes him out of this contention of drafting another wide receiver. But with all the with all this new resurfacing issues with Rashad Rice. Uh, Rashid Rice. Yeah. Do, is there a window there that they take a wide receiver? I think there is now. Very minuscule. I, I don't think it's necessarily big, but once we understand how the legalities with Rashid Rice and how that's going to be looking like for him, they might take an Xavier Worthy, who is the fastest wide receiver in this draft class, who, in my all opinion, time. can play the slot. Yeah, of all time, who's going to play the slot, can extend the field and play the middle of the field. Kadarius Tony, who? Yeah. <laughs> Xavier Worthy at the 107 for me. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, I am still on by Rashid Rice side of the mm -hmm. landscape, mm -hmm. um, but... I do think it opens up the possibility at 32 now. Um, all right, I'm going to take the first running back off the board. My RB1 since December, Trey Benson, goes to the Dallas Cowboys in round two. He's the first running back drafted here. And, uh, I mean, what is not to like here? He's got the size. He's got the speed. He's got the production. He's got the draft capital. He's got the landing spot. We're talking about Trey Benson. If he went to the Dallas Cowboys, what's his range of outcome in year one? Yeah. How is top 15 not in the range of outcomes? It's a thousand percent in the range of outcomes, if not top 12. It might be going drastic, but in that offense, behind that O-line, I'll take I'll take Trey Benson here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it look, definitely makes sense. They're taking trigger Trey at the 108. I'll go with my wide uh, my second running back in this class. He goes in the third round to the Los Angeles like Chargers. That. Jonathan Brooks, yeah, I know hot. you're probably saying, hey, what's going to happen with Gus Edwards? It's okay. I don't care what they do with Gus Edwards. Jonathan Brooks can take his time from his first year. But in a dynasty perspective, in the long haul, Jonathan Brooks here is easily going to eat in this Jim Harbaugh offense. You talk about yep. Blake Horn coming out of Michigan and what he did with, with Jim. John, uh, Jonathan Brooks is significantly better than Blake. And now he's going into that offense who in my opinion, is going to be getting at least, if I'm thinking about Jim Harbaugh's offense and what the expectations that he's going to potentially be yeah. getting, you know, 20 to 25 touches a game, which is exciting for someone. And keep in mind, sure. Gus Edwards does have an out uh, in tw after tw this year, 2024. So I'll take uh, Jonathan Brooks here. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, we always talk about how Brooks is a long-term play. He's a long-term investment, but there isn't the kind of risk. Let's just clarify that. He's a long-term investment, but we don't feel like there's risk in that investment. Why? Because there's a precedent for running backs being very good after tearing their ACL. I Absolutely. mean, wide receivers, some being even better after torn ACL. Cooper Cup comes to mind, right? Mm -hmm. Adrian Peterson comes to mind. So, uh, you know, just, just because he's torn his ACL, that is not the risk. It's just a long-term investment. You're probably not going to get, like, 
a huge return in the first five weeks of the season. Yeah. But this is Dynasty. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to probably take um, the first quarterback off the board now. And Mm. the more I think about it, this was the... This was the uh, the expensive. train I was leading last year. I was pumping it in a one quarterback format. Give me the guy who can rush for a thousand yards all day. Oh and boy. this is not to to limit anyone else, but give me Jaden Daniels who goes to the Washington Commanders. Pick two overall. Yeah, I like the Commanders. Maybe maybe it's a little bias. I don't care. A little bias. I'm fine with that. A little bias. But give me the guy who can lead the league in rushing. Your floor is is non-existent. There, the floor is so high is what I'm trying to say here. And the ceiling is so high that in a one quarterback league, it's tough to miss with guys who can rush like that. I mean, think about it. Justin Fields, um, by the way, is Justin Fields or Jane Daniels a better prospect? You can disagree with me in the comments. I think Daniels is a better prospect, but a lot of people might disagree. That's fine. Um, but even Justin Fields on a per game basis had a top five finish at the quarterback position. If you had sold Justin Fields at the right time, it would have netted you multiple first-round picks in a lot of leagues. So sure. even if you don't believe in Daniels long-term, we know he's going to score fantasy points. Mm-hmm. Anthony Richardson couldn't stay healthy, scored a lot of fantasy points. Uh, so I'll take the guy who can win my, my league, not say that the others can't. Yeah. And, you know, I'll just counter that. Once again, to continue the conversation here, would you have, not you specifically, but the fantasy community, would you have rather have C.J. Stroud or Anthony Richardson last year after what we know? Now, hindsight's 2020, of course. That's very difficult. But, like, in this sure. scenario, Caleb Williams going to one of the best situations in the NFL, right? Yeah. Taking, taking him here at the 111. DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift. The offensive line gets better. The defense is getting better. It's a whole new regime here for Chicago Bears. Yes, Jane and Daniel can get you those 1,000 yards per game in a fantasy perspective. But if we're looking – then I then my next question to the fantasy community is, like, okay, who is – What's the long? What's the what's the longevity play? Can Caleb Williams be a top five quarterback that can finish on a sure like that on a week to week basis? So there's an even balance when you think of the rushing upside and someone that could potentially be successful who has a rushing upside, just as maybe not as much as Jaden Daniels. Once again, think about last yeah. year where everyone was taking Anthony Richardson versus C.J. Stroud. I bet you a lot of people would rather have C.J. Stroud right now. Once again, we wasn't expecting that to happen, but just a conversation to have in a thought process to think about when you're going into your drafts. That's fair. I would say injuries are not predictable. Certainly rushing quarterbacks can be injured more often than pocket passers. But if you look at the two games where Anthony Richardson was healthy, he was averaging over 28 points per game. Mm -hmm. That would have been quarterback one on the season by far. Yeah. So I hear you. It's just it's a tough reality of playing what would have happened if if he stayed healthy. But I guess you can also credit C.J. Stroud for putting up the points he did, not as a rushing quarterback. Yeah. Um, But all right. I am at the 112. And at the 112, I will I'll grab Lab McConkey off the board. I think he's falling okay. far enough. He goes to the commanders in round two. Okay. Uh, I think this is a terrible, terrible move for if you own Jahan Dotson. 100%. Um, Lab McConkey is going to play outside. He's going to play inside. They're going to move him all over the field. It's a different staff entirely, but think about what Curtis Samuel did for this team beforehand. Yeah. I think Lab McConkey, to a different extent, different player is going to fill an important role for them if they spend an early second-round pick on him. And keep in mind, Lab McConkie is going to be building chemistry with Jaden Daniels throughout the entire offseason. He's going to go to rookie camp, build chemistry with Jaden Daniels. He'll have that chemistry going into regular camp, preseason, exactly, right? So yeah, I uh, I'll take Lab McConkie off the board at the 112. We are going to get into the 201, but just quickly, we want to let you know that if you want your Dynasty team reviewed by Badaki and myself, we go live three times a week and review people's Dynasty teams. If you want your Dynasty team to be reviewed by us, it's very simple. All you need to do is become a Mother Flocker member with the promo code LAND. Yes. You'll get everything that you see on your screen. And by the way, I'll, I'll give you a little sneak peek. Right now, the Flock Fantasy site is in beta mode, but we are adding my teams. You can sync your teams Look at where you stand in the community. Eventually, you'll be able to see where you stand with my rankings, with the community rankings, and eventually, you'll be able to submit teams directly from the site for us to review. So uh, go ahead, use the promo code LAND, support the show, and get a Dynasty team reviewed uh, by us. You're at the 201. What are you thinking? Yeah, the 201 here, multiple different ways I could potentially go. Um, Still very interesting quarterbacks on the board. 
But since I got my quarterback here at the 111 with Caleb Williams, let's stretch it out a little bit. I'm going to go Xavier Leggett at the okay. 201. He goes with the 39th pick to the Carolina Panthers. Now, I know mm-hmm. you're probably saying Adam Thielen. You're probably saying um, Deontay Johnson. Xavier Leggett brings that size and speed to this offense here. A big body wide receiver that we kind of compared to the DK Metcalf. Now, he may not be as big as him after official results coming in, but somebody that can definitely do so many things for this offense, right? I kind of, I compared him to, yeah, the DK Metcalf, so, you know, a, a very versatile player that can play in the backfield and outside and in the slot. So I'll take Xavier to get here going to the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'll take the guy who's thrown the ball to... Uh... Justin Jefferson, Jordan sure. Addison, and TJ Hawkinson. I'll take sure, JJ sure. McCarthy off the board at the 201. Yeah. Our 202. It's to one quarterback league. Yes, Drake May's available. I'm playing the world out. We're having fun with this. Having okay. Fun. Shoot me if you, if you hate the idea, but I'll take JJ here. JJ has been my quarterback four in the class since December. That hasn't changed for me. Uh, there was a moment where I thought I might move Drake, uh, Bo Nix up, but uh, I think he's people really underestimate his ceiling. I really think that. Good. Um, just because he wasn't used the way they wanted him, they doesn't have the production. Mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. But every time they asked him to do what they needed him to do, he did it. And I think there is so much room for him to grow and to become a better player. So I'll take JJ off the board there. If he's with Kevin O'Connell in that offense, yeah, I'll take JJ. Yeah, look, definitely makes sense there. And I'll go Drizzy Drake May here. Nixon. He goes to the New England Patriots. There's so many mixed reports about this guy now. Right, like the Patriots don't want if Drake may. If I'm seeing reports that Drake may fall to the Patriots at the at the third pick. They don't want him, right? Mm-hmm. They they rather take somebody else. I think they would rather have Jaden Daniels over Drake May, according to reports. I've seen multiple different reports here, but hey, Drake May uh, coming out of UNC, I I think he's one of the better quarterbacks here. I compared him to the Justin Herberts type, Josh Allen yeah, type of builds. He is he has the tools. And, and and the he ha, he has everything he has everything yeah, and I think a does. lot of a lot of NFL teams or maybe the fantasy community are potentially overreacting now. There's no perfect science to drafting and understanding how to scout quarterbacks clearly, but he's still my QB two in this NFL draft here. An ideal NFL size, a crazy deep ball. I think he has everything tangible here, and he gets some weapons coming into this second round as well, or in the yeah. third round for him. In New England. No, I I I think don't take my JJ pick as a indictment on Drake May. Love Drake May. I'm still all in on Drake May, but obviously I can see how it would feel that way if someone was watching the video. Sure. I'm a big fan of his game. I don't think we should overreact too much to him being on a, 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 the Patriots, so he would have been my next pick as well. But at the 204, I'm going to shine a light on one of my guys. I've been I have been the conductor of this train. Oh boy, since December. And it's not stopping, okay? I said it on a live stream a couple weeks ago, Badaki. Oh, boy. The best value in the entire NFL draft is going to be Jalen McMillan this year. I'm going to take him at the 204. He goes to the Cincinnati Bengals in round three. I told you guys when we were talking about Jalen McMillan back in December that his floor is Tyler Boyd in the Cincinnati Bengals offense. His ceiling is much higher than that, but that is his floor in my personal opinion. You put him in Cincinnati... We don't know if T. Higgins is going to be there long term, but you have an opportunity for Jalen McMillan, second half of the year, probably start to get more and more and more production. Think about the Rasheed Rice season. Think about the Amon Ross St. Brown season. Clearly, they had less competition, but he'll just get more and more chemistry over the season. I think he's a very good player. I have no doubts that he's going to produce in the NFL out of the slot, uh, and I'll take him there at the 204. Uh, potentially, Burrow's number two wide receiver, as soon as the year after he's drafted. So I'll take Jalen McMillan at the 204. My guy, best value in the entire NFL draft. Put it on the board. <laughs> yeah, put it on the board there. All right. I, I'm i going to go with another guy here going to a team that I believe he instantly slots into be the number one wide receiver, and that is Slick Ricky Pierce. So I'll go into the New England I Patriots like in the early third round. I mean, you tell me who he's going to be competing there with. Yeah, you have uh, Demario Douglas. You have Kendrick Bourne. You have... Um, KJ Osborne, none mm-hmm. of these guys scare me. Tyquan Thornton, Ricky Pierce, or comes in who has really great, reliable hands, has that underrated speed as well. 
uh, 4 4 1. I think it's pretty good for a 6 1, nearly 190 pound wide receiver. He brings versatility to this team, which is exciting. And this is exactly what Drake May can, can do. Once again, I mean, Zach kind of mentioned it earlier. He's going to be in rookie camps with Drake May in this scenario, in this world that we're living in here. Slick Ricky, in my opinion, instantly becomes a number one wide receiver and a great value here at the 205. All right, I'm going to take uh, someone from your New York Giants, but it's oh, not a quarterback. It's actually a running back. You guys get Blake Corman round three. Mm -hmm. We talked about this all offseason. Devin Singletary at risk of potentially losing that number one role if the NFL draft goes a certain way. In this mock draft, in this world that we're living in, it does go that way. Blake Corman is a New York Giant, uh, and there's no scenario in which Blake Corman isn't getting heavily involved in that backfield, especially yeah. when you think about Devin Singletary, who his offensive coordinator was Brian Dayball in Buffalo. Brian Dayball never had like a number one guy. It was consistently like Moss, Singletary, Moss, Singletary. We kept trying to guess who was the guy. Now you bring in Blake Corum, it's definitely going to be a two-headed backfield there. So I'll take Blake Corum at the 206. Yeah, makes sense here. All right, I'm going to go another wide receiver. I'm going to continue this. I'm going to go Roman Wilson. Like he goes to the Dallas Cowboys. And yes, you have CeeDee Lamb there. Brandon Cook's still there, but nobody else. Michael Gallup's no longer on this team. Does Brandon Cook play the outside? Roman Wilson plays the slot or vice versa. Roman Wilson plays outside, and then Brandon Cooks plays a slot. We've seen how Dak Prescott spreads the ball around. He's clearly a better Michael Gallup. He could do so much more. He actually rose his stock here at the Senior Bowl. I'll take I'll take um, Roman Wilson here, who going to the yeah. Dallas Cowboys is going to rise in a lot of people's rankings. I love the spot. I just am confused on why Shane made this pick. Um, great what he does. But CD plays a lot of slot. I know they move mm -hmm. him all over the field. I don't think Roman's going to play outside in the NFL. So I, I, I love the landing spot. I would He definitely would have been my next pick. I just have the question of why, you know, sure. just trying to understand that. Sure. Um, but I'm going to take Jalen Wright off the board next at the 208. He goes to the Houston Texans. So the Texans, we heard that they were not done with their running back room after the mix and trade. They mm -hmm. add Jalen Wright here. Is there a scenario here where... Jalen Wright slowly takes that job at some point. Well, in that offense, I think Wright actually fits the offense better than Mixon. Just how I projected Wright going into the NFL. Could yeah. be wrong. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll take Jalen Wright here at the 208 to the Houston Texans. Okay, I'll take my guy Malachi Corley going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Deontay Johnson no longer on this team. They don't draft a wide receiver in the first round. Malachi Corley instantly slots in to be the second wide receiver in this in this class or in this, you know, Steelers room behind George yeah. Pickens, yards after the catch is what he's going to bring versatility, creativity, a more of a gadget player, 5'11, 215 pounds. That's exciting in this offense with Russell Wilson and Justin Fields here. So Malachi Cordy to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'll let the slide stop here. A lot of people are thinking, where the hell is Troy Franklin? No, we don't dislike Troy Franklin, but I absolutely hate this landing spot. Yeah. He goes in round three to the Colts. I don't think he's going to fall to round three. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. But the Colts landing spot, we have talked about how much we dislike this landing spot for any wide receiver in this class. And it's not because we don't like Anthony Richardson. It's just there's no evidence, even going back to college, that Anthony Richardson is going to be able to support even one number one wide receiver, right? Yeah. I mean, if you look at the games where A. Rich was healthy and Michael Pittman, one game, he had over 20 fantasy points. The other game, he had like four targets and caught one of them. At the end of the day, you're just fighting with so many players for competition with a quarterback, which we have no evidence he can support multiple wide receivers in fantasy. Mm -hmm. I worry about consistency, so that's why Troy has fallen down the board. It's not because of him as a player, but we have to stop pretending that landing spots and environments don't matter. No. We have to stop pretending that. Yeah, a thousand percent. This is a dead, it feels like a dead asset with Troy Franklin here. I'm um, going to the Indianapolis Colts, which it will just be absolutely frustrating um, for yeah. the fantasy community here. And I feel like he's consistently going in the second round now, which, I mean, I said it, one of my bold takes, does he fall into the third round? I said he could fall in the third round. I don't want that to happen. Yeah, but I don't think he does. I don't think he does. That's a bold take there. That's a bold take one there for me here. All right. At the 211, oh, man, I'm going to wrap my head around this. I'm not necessarily sure who to take. Um, but I am going to take another running back. And I think this is a longer okay. play. This is something that I believe could could benefit him. 
And I know there's another running back on the board that you're probably surprised that I'm not going to take, but I'm going to take Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn okay. Lloyd goes to the Cincinnati Bengals. I get what you're saying. Zach Moss there, Chase Brown. Uh, when Marshawn Lloyd comes into this team in the fourth round, who could potentially bring a lot more versatility and, and explosiveness to this offense that Zach Moss can't bring, that Chase Brown does bring, but more in a a spatial back, right? Like, uh, I guess just a, a role guy, Marshawn Lloyd can take over the Zach Moss role. What I'm projecting for the Cincinnati Bengals to give Zach Moss, right? So Marshawn Lloyd, it may not be right now that he's successful, but once he is, once Zach Moss is gone, which I'm pretty sure I don't have on the top of my head, I'm pretty sure he will have an out in the, after this year. If not, he only has a two-year contract where he could definitely get faded or cut depending on that cap casualty. Marshawn Lloyd falling into this spot for the Cincinnati Bengals that we've seen Joe Mixon be successful there. I'll take him and take a chance here going here at the 211. It makes sense. I'm going to surprise some people. There's a running back still available in round four. Um, in the last decade, if you look at running backs who have hit for fantasy football, when I say hit, that means they have had a top 24 points per game season in their first four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you look at running backs who have hit for fantasy football in round four, the hit rate is 17%. In round five, the hit rate is 16.7%. There is virtually no difference yeah. historically in drafting a round four or round five running back. Okay. Um, and I'm going to make a video here soon on, uh, on, on stuff like this. But mm -hmm. I'm going to take my RB5 in the class who goes in round five. Isaac Carindo goes to the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. In round five. I'm going to take him off the board here. Um, it's funny. Some people have comped him to Isaiah Pacheco. If the Chiefs don't want to pay Isaiah long-term, and there's a lot of reason that leads us to believe that they wouldn't yep. because of the current model that they're every year they're kind of trying to build around, uh, Isaac absolutely could play an important part in that offense. He's got size. He's got speed. He's not got the production that a Trey Benson does, but uh, I think he can absolutely be successful in that offense. I think a combo of Horindo and Pacheco would be deadly back there. So, I'll take Isaac off the board. Of course, there are a lot of names that we did not select, and we are going to make an all-snubs list mm -hmm. now, Badaki. Is there any names that come to mind to you before I, I say some names that come to mind for me? Uh, yeah, the first guy that comes to mind is Braylon Allen for me. Um, that was sure. a guy that I was contemplating with. Uh, I would rather have the talent over Marshawn Lloyd, personally, um, than sure. Braylon Allen. I know he goes to a better situation there with... Um, James Conner, but I would personally would rather have him. Um, I thought someone like a... You kind of have him already here. Yeah, I thought someone like Jatavion Sanders. I was, I was looking for him on, on, the, on the sheet. Just Tavion yeah, Sanders. Sanders went round three to yeah. the Commanders. <laughs> yeah, he went round three to the Commanders. I think that's a perfect landing spot. Now, there's a lot of mouse to feed there with Lamb McConkley now on that offense there. But yes, that is one of the two most intriguing landing spots that I think was left on the board there for me. Yeah, I would add Keon Coleman. He went to the Lions mm -hmm. in round two. Um, you can call us Keon Coleman haters, but if Keon Coleman actually goes to the Lions in round two, what is the reason to be excited? Because similar to Troy Franklin, you're competing with so many mouths. Yeah. One of the best tight ends we've ever seen as a rookie in Sam Laporta. Mm -hmm. Amon Ross St. Brown, who just had over 1,500 yards. Jameer Gibbs, one of the best pass-catching running backs in the NFL. Where does he line up? Jameson Williams, what if he produces year two? So... He's a, he's a snub. Tez Walker, Jalen Polk to the Bears. The quarterbacks who go in round two, I just don't bet on round two quarterbacks, to be honest. Uh, that's Knicks and Pinnix. Javon Baker, who went to the Ravens. Will Shipley went to the Bucks. Audric Esme to the Vikings. So there's definitely like a reason to bet on some of those names. No question. And the last name I'll talk about is Malik Washington, who went to the Buffalo Bills uh, in round four. Okay. That could instantly make Shakir and Curtis Samuel irrelevant. Malik Washington is a serious prospect. He's a legit prospect. Second best, best PFF receiving grade um, of anyone not, uh, except for Malik Neighbors yeah. um, last year. Um, but yeah, any other names before we end here? No, I think that's about it. We have a lot of names on this list. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's been great so far. We appreciate you. Hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, we will see you guys soon. All up. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com.
www.ebaymedical.com. Oh. It's so easy. Even your grandma could scan that QR code right there.